Thank God. All right, all right. So we're going into the Word of God. The, um, the, the scripture, or before the scripture, the subject that I want to talk to you all about. The subject is called Remember to Forget. All right? Remember to forget. Come on, tell somebody. We could tell somebody now. Tell somebody, remember to forget. Tell the other person you just ignored. Remember to forget. If you want to chat, why don't you put it in there? Remember to forget. Now, I just want to make sure we're all on the same accord. Do we all agree that there are times in your life where you need to do away with the old, right? and make room for the new. We all agree with that. There's just times, periods in your life. It's spring. Have you started spring cleaning? Are you doing these things? Are you like starting to make, you know, purge your, your, uh, your, your areas? Are you, you know, things that don't spark joy? Are you getting rid of them? You know, the, maybe the rule of thumb is if you haven't worn it for like 10 years, maybe. It might be time. It might be time. It might, it might be time, sis, 10 years. Yeah, but you know, why do we do that? We do things because things have memories. We hold on to them. It's, I remember I was like, great America this time. We do this, right? And then, you know, there's just time that we got to make room for the, for the new. Like when, you're, when your phone tells you you don't have any more storage space because you got 2,000 pictures of the selfies that you took all in one night and you went through them all for about an hour trying to put filters on them, and you end up posting none of them. Now it's time to purge your phone. It's time to make room, amen? It's time to make room. And there, there's times when we have to abandon the old ways of doing things to adopt a new way, right? So that you can have a more efficient or a better way of doing things. You, you adopt a new practice of things, right? Um, you might remember this. I don't know if they still do this in high school. Remember when you had to take typing class? Is that still a thing? See, it's not a thing, educators. That's why the children are still typing like this, right? That was our testimony. Do you remember it when you was that? That was your testimony? You was doing that? But then you learned a better way. And when you went to typing class, why wouldn't they give the babies typing classes no more? I'm going to write a petition. Um, but when you start typing, you learn a new and a more efficient way, right? All right, all right. So you, we're all on the same uh, agreement. You know, even like, uh, you know who a good example of this is? Steph Curry. How many people love Steph Curry? I love Steph Curry. He is the, come on, the Warriors. We got, okay, I don't feel like I'm not getting the Warrior love in here. We got blue seats. Okay, it's good. Just a hint. Okay. Steph Curry is a good example of this because if you follow his story, his shooting form, right? When he was uh, in high school, matter of, um, you know, let me just put aside though. I'm a real hooper out here. I just, this has nothing to do with me. And I, I just want y'all to always remember I'm a real hooper in these streets. Don't let this skirt fool you. I'm not like a, a Lacia and Italia hooper. I'm more like a city club sport type hooper. Okay, that, this has nothing to do with me. Okay, Steph Curry, when he was in high school, he was still like 5'10", really short guy. And, you know, he had all these ambitions of being in the NBA like his dad. But they were like, his dad would tell him, Del Curry would be like, you'll never make it in the NBA because your shot, you're bringing your shot from your waist. Like, you're shooting from down here. If you're going to make it in the NBA, your shot has to be up here. Y'all check the form? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Is it? Yo, shot, it has to be up here. It can't be down here. So what Steph did, he took the whole summer of his junior year in high school, and he totally broke down his whole shot. And he said it was so frustrating. And it was so embarrassing because he couldn't even make any shots with his new form. You know, he couldn't even make anything past the paint. Like, he couldn't do anything. He, like, it was so frustrating. But what if he had not taken the time to break down the old shot and develop a new way. Like, what if he would be like, I'm fine. I'm just going to college. It'll be fine. They're going to they gonna have to accept me the way I am. What if they, he would not be the most amazing shooter that we have seen in our time if he had not let go of some old practices, right, and adopted something new. It says that um, this, take, this takes practice, right? It says he makes uh, 500 shots per day in the summer when he's off season, and he makes around 200 to uh, 350 shots per day during season. 
I, I, I said he makes them. I didn't say he attempts them. I said he makes them. That's, that's a whole, I would have been, mine would have been 500 attempts. His is um, makes. But um, if, if Steph had to do all this to break an old habit and maintain a new one, imagine what we need to do in our lives to develop a new way of thinking, right? A new way of thinking. I believe in this season that God is inviting each and every one of us and those online um, into this practice of remembering to forget. I'll explain more. Remembering to forget. Our verse that we're going to center around is Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. This is our Lenten verse, our lectionary verse for today. And it says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isn't that beautiful? Just sit in that verse for a little bit. The NIV says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. Just, just forget it. Said, just forget it. I know that's easier said than done, right? Because in this scripture, what is it talking about? The former things. What, what is the former thing? What are we talking about? Well, in this passage in Isaiah, God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah to a group of people who have been exiled. They have been hard-headed. They didn't want to listen to God. God had been trying to tell them, hey, leave those idols alone. Follow me. I love you. We got a covenant together. They kept wanting to do their own thing. So God was like, okay, you need a time out. I'm going to sit you down. You're going to get uh, exiled. You're going to have to move from your own home and be captive to somebody else. So these former things was captivity. The former thing is captivity. They had been put on this time out for so long that they, got, they thought God forgot about them. Come on, I need to talk to the real folks in the, in the audience. I'm not, we're not doing the religious super fake people. We're going to do the real. Y'all real with me? The to be honest people. Like, this is, this is, they thought God forgot about them. They, they forgot, they thought that we, God had been in this for so long, we, there's no way that God can love us. We did wrong. We, we, we was wrong. We did wrong, God. We had to be on, put on timeout. And I can relate to these people. I don't know about you. Sometimes we look at these verses and we be like, that's a shame that they did that. No, I can relate to these people who were in captivity. Does anybody else knows what it feels like to be captive to something? To be captive to something. You know, sin, you know, that's just in general, right? Or uh, captive to anger, captive to addictions or even negative mindsets and you can't even, you know, think right and, or, or just envy. Every time you look and scroll in, I like, mm -mm, they think they all that. Just a whole thing. Of, the list could go on and on about things. Am I in the right place of people who have been captive by something? Because I know I have, right? And if you're not careful, you can, that thing can become your identity, right? Or how people identify you. Oh, that's him. He always lying. Mm-mm. Uh-uh, girl, hide your purse because they be stealing. Nope. Mm-hmm. How you doing? Right? You become known as the, they always cheating. Don't, mm -mm, don't be with them. They going to cheat. You become, that becomes your identity if you're, not, if you're not careful. We know what it's like to be captive to things. Can you imagine that God is speaking to these people in the middle of their captivity and then he whispers something new to them. He says, hey, I, I want to do something new. In the middle of their mess, in the middle of their darkest times, in the middle when they, when, of when they feel like they messed up the most, God was like, hey, 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 don't worry about all that. I'm about to do something new. Can you imagine how they felt? Like, wait, who, who God talking to? Because we on punishment. I don't know. God probably still mad at us. No, God is whispering something new. God is saying, yes, there was consequences for your sins, but I'm going to make things right between us. You know, I, I want you to forget the captivity you. 
the person you were when you were acting out in captivity. Now, this is a real talk. Y'all said we can have real talk, right? A lot of church talk that comes from the pulpit is like people hating on us, and they hate her, and they don't like me. But can we be honest that it sometimes is us that we done did people wrong sometimes? We caused the argument, we, we did the breakup, we cheated, we lied, we manipulated. Anybody else got some we's in here? I've been a we. I don't, it ain't always everybody else. And sometimes it's me. Sometimes, uh, now, God is saying, I want you to forget that you, that version of you. Because, you know, the biggest tactic that the enemy has against us is to keep us trapped in our old memories. Anybody ever experienced that? It's like that old school CD that keeps skipping and just keep playing. It keeps playing and it keeps playing. And you keep reliving things over and over again. So many regrets. So many shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I wish I woulda just ran when I met that person. Why did I take their number? Like all so many things, right? We, we, and have you been like me? You just creating all kind of imaginary comebacks that you wish you woulda that all the rebuttals that you should have said that came like two weeks later, like, dang, I should have said this. Oh, I would have killed him with that, man. And it's too late to like go back and be like, and another thing, like it's past. Where the enemy can use this to repeat over and over and over the old you, the you you used to be, the you, the you that wasn't the best version of you. God is saying, Forget those old things. I'm about to do something new in you. How many people believe that? Do you believe that in your life? I believe it. And sometimes it feels like church talk, but I'm really sensing this because here's the kicker. In that verse it says, in verse 19, will you not perceive it? It's a question that God has for us. I'm doing, hey, hey, I'm checking out. I'm about to do something new, but can you see it though? Can you sense it? Can you feel it? Perceive means to become aware of or conscious of or come into a realization or come into an understanding. You know, God could be doing, trying to do something new in you, and you don't even see it. You don't even understand it. I like my old. I like it where I am comfortable. You ever been comfortable in a lot of, like, in your room being, like, really messy? But you're comfortable. I'm chilling. I, the, none of it bothers me, right? But God's like, I want to do something. I want to clean the clutter in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. But you have to be able to see it, to sense it, to believe it, to not just believe that you, all you, I'm just, it's just captivity to me. That's all I could be. I'm just, I'm the one that messed up. I'm the one that lied. I'm the one that cheated. I'm the one that sold. That's just who I am. Can you believe that God wants to do something new in you? Can you, just, can you just let that glimmer of hope come into you? You have springs, according to this verse, springs and rivers available to you. And we walking around dry, thirsty, and lost. When God is saying, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a spring. I'm going to let it spring forth. I'm going to make a way in wilderness. In tough, in tough areas, I'm about to make a way. I'm about to give you water if you're thirsty. All that things that you're looking for to fill that, I got you. Will you not see it? Somebody say, God is doing something new. Come on, say it to yourself. God's doing something new. God's doing something new. Sometimes God is wanting to do something new, but we are too tied to the past. We're too tied to the past. Have you ever felt captive to yesterday? To yesterday. Beatles wrote a song about it. I like to hear, here go. No, just kidding. <laughs> yesterday. We, the, anybody live in yesterday? It's hard. Sometimes you get caught up in, especially if you're a former athlete. You, you caught up in the yesterday. Boy, we killed them back in. Oh, we gave it. Oh, we gave it to them in the state championship in like 72. Like, what are we doing? Like, we, we can live in yesterday. And we have to make it a practice. Hear me. We have to make it a practice to remember to forget. Say that. Remember to forget. Sometimes we are operating under an old operating system. An old, like, you know, your phone. Anybody got a, a phone and you skipped your upgrades and you still operating on, like, three versions back? That's our lives. 
Sometimes we're operating under an old version of us, and we just get comfortable with, well, this is just who I am. You know, they know I like to pop off. They know my, you know, they know I got a smart mouth. They know, you know, I'll fight. On, you know, we just get used to who we are. And God's like, no, 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 I want to upgrade you. That's the old you. I want to do something new in you. Because every day we're progressing and maturing and we're being conformed into the image of Christ. This is the journey. This is the process. Do you all know we come to church not just to do what we did today and have a good time? And not just because we're good people and we just want to check this off our list. All of this is because we want to be more like Christ. We are going to be conformed to the image of Christ. We're not conformed to good church-going people. We're not conformed. and We are trying to look and become more like Jesus. Did y'all know that's what y'all signed up for? We want to be more like Jesus, not more like the musicians, not more like the pastor, not more like it. We are maturing and progressing and going onward to a better, a better version of us. And Paul knew this. Paul, the apostle Paul knew this. And you know why? Because Paul had a past. Paul had a testimony. Paul wasn't always open up. We like, we love Paul. He wrote all the, yeah, but Paul was a gangster. Paul was out here in these streets. Paul was out here like murder dubs. Well, I don't know I don't where, where that came from. I don't know. Um, per- <laughs> Paul was out here in these streets doing. Paul had a pass. He would go. His job was to come in to a space like this and just round us all up, take us to jail, kill us, whatever. Oh, you following Jesus? No, we ain't having that. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day. Like, no, I'm, that's how I do this. Read this in Philippians 3. He gave us whole resume. Look, I'm, t- I'm about it. He had a pass because he thought he was doing the right thing, but he was doing it the wrong way. God had to turn around. So think, think about this. Paul had a pass. Everywhere he went, people thought he was the op. Like, like, oh, okay, you preaching? Mm-hmm. Y'all check around the corner, see if anybody coming around us up. Like, he had to live with this. He had a past. You think once we come to Jesus, like, we're supposed to just be this amazing, like, don't, don't forget, you know, I'm this person. Like, no, every one of us have a testimony. It's not for us to be ashamed of what we went through, but we're maturing and growing into it. So Paul had a past, and this is why he wrote in Philippians 3. Check this out, Philippians 3, 12 through 14. It says, not that I have already obtained this, all all of this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Come on, Paul. Look at this. Sit in that. Paul's saying I haven't even fully arrived to my full maturity. But he's going to keep pressing on. Keep pressing towards knowing Christ more and maturing. He's striving to get closer to which to that which Christ grabbed hold of him. I love this verse. Read that in, in verse 12. He said, I press on to take hold of that which Jesus took hold of me. I want to take hold of that which Jesus took hold of me. Has anybody ever had an encounter like that? I'm trying to take hold. Jesus did something in me. Jesus took a hold of something in me. Jesus captured my heart in such a way. Jesus visited me in such a night season. Jesus gave me peace when I had no peace. That thing that Jesus did in me, I'm trying to get a hold of that. I'm trying to get whatever he did in me, I want to continue to take a hold of that. And this is where we all need encounters. 
If you don't have a testimony like that, this is our time to pray for it. Everybody needs an encounter with God, a time when they know that God took a hold of their heart and their soul and their mind. And it's like, God, I'm going to continue to chase after that. He's not satisfied with where he is. He wants to keep growing. He's not content or complacent. That's what keeps him pressing on. Come on, press on. That's what keeps us pressing on. In this Christian journey, saints, listen to me. You have to have a short memory and clear direction. Come on, say short memory, clear direction. I'm sorry for all the basketball analogies, but if you're going to be a good shooter, you got to have a short memory. My youngest son was king of this. He would shoot anywhere, anytime, any place. He would have just missed 10 in a row and still would chuck another one up. And we were like, why? You don't you want to pass? Do you want to, like, run a play or something? And he was like, no. He had a short memory. Like, oh, well, well another opportunity. Yeah. This is how we are to be in the body of Christ, in our walk. Have a short memory. Have a short memory. Is the enemy using your past against you? Are you still being haunted by the things that happened years ago? Is it still replaying over and over in our mind? God is calling us to have a short memory. Paul experienced the good, the bad, the ugly, just like we do. But the way to get over yesterday is to focus forward. To focus forward. That's why he says, I press on. The way to get over what happened yesterday is continually to press on and to focus forward. Yes, we heal. Yes, we get therapy. Yes, we process, we reflect, and then we press on. Amen? Yes, we don't just stuff it inside and say, like, you know what? I'm just going to forget it. No, that's not healthy. We're not doing that. But we're going to get we're healed. We're going to get the therapy we need. We're going to process. We're going to reflect. And then we're going to press on. Amen. Anybody joining me in that? How many are you tired of the enemy haunting, like, really just coming against you day after day about old stuff? Come on. God's doing a new thing. God's doing a new thing. I want you to get that in your spirit. God's doing a new thing in you. Tony Evans, he's this amazing author, speaker, writer. He's the only, the black, the only guy who has a, black, a commentary, a black man that has his own commentary. I love him so much. He says, you got to let go of your successes, your failures, and the ways others have hurt you. It's not that you don't remember the past. It's not, that you don't, it's not that you don't remember the past. It's that you don't allow the past to be a controlling factor in your life. Don't spend too much time, I love this, looking in the rear view mirror. A much bigger piece of glass called the windshield should have your focus because where you're going is a lot bigger than where you've been. I love that. Can you imagine how ridiculous it would be for you to drive your whole drive looking in the rear view mirror the whole time you drive and you just looking? Come on, it's dangerous, you're going to crash, you're going, oh, yeah, or even you ever had that one uncle who could drive backwards, everybody had that one who could just drive backwards, like, real good. But how, how frivolous it would be to spend your whole drive looking in the real mirror, yet this is what we do in our lives. We spend our whole time, we should be going forward, we got a destination to go to, but we spend our whole time looking in the rearview mirror when our future is in front of us. So every time the enemy tries to use your past against you, come on, saints, we got to have a comeback. Somebody, somebody say a comeback. It's time to have a comeback. You know, we let the devil do too much in our lives. We be giving. The devil just be out here doing whatever you want to do, and we, it's time for us to finally have a comeback. Y'all ready to have a comeback? So the next time the enemy tries to haunt you and tell you about what you used to be and the old captivity you and the things that you used to fall short about or the times that you were wrong and that you did do it wrong and you didn't do it the all the way right and people are still mad at you. How many people still got people still mad at them? It's people still mad at you. They're not letting it go. You're going to have to work through that too. But there is a comeback 
that we can always have, and it's that God's doing something new in me. Come on, can you say that? Say that to yourself. God's doing something new in me. Every time the devil tried, but remember when you was? God's doing something new in me. Somebody see you, oh, girl, what, you still doing them scams? God's doing something new in me. God's doing something new in me. You don't even got to answer a lot. The devil comes to you, oh, yeah, you know, you always be prone to cheating and stuff. No, 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 no. God's doing something new in me. Come on, tell yourself, you really got to listen to to the word of God and just say it to yourself. God's doing something new. This is the practice. Remember Steph Curry? He didn't just automatically shoot like that. He had to practice. He had to do it over and over and over again until it become a, a habit. It says that old habits takes time to change. A recent study has described that the 21-day habit formation formula was a myth. Remember that? 21 days to a new habit. It takes 21 days to start a new. Remember that? That was like a whole thing. That turns out it was a myth. Right. You thought you had 21 days? No. You need more. A new habit usually takes a little more than two months, 66 days to be exact, and as much as 254 days until it's fully formed. So, be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. Come on, pat yourself on the back. I'm going to give you some grace. Come on, give yourself. It takes time to start a new way of thinking. God is saying, forget that old stuff. Forget it. It's time to move on to what God is doing in you. God's doing something new in you. Okay, yeah, you had addictions in the past, but God's doing something new in you. Yeah, your relationships didn't always work out, but God's doing something new in you. Yeah, you had an anger problem here and there, but God's doing something new. You had an attitude problem, but God's doing something new. Come on, God's doing something new in us. Here's a few reflection questions we're going to take on our way out. I want you to think and reflect on this. Where... Do you need to do some spring cleaning in your heart? What is in there that's not sparking joy anymore? What is in there that's being hoarded and just I'm holding on to these memories? Remember back in prom, though? That was a great, like we holding on to old memories, old things that need to be cleaned out. What are some things from your past that you would like a clean slate from? What if I were to tell you today that you have a clean slate available to you? What if I, like, for all the stuff that happened in the past, what if I was like, it was just we'll do it, wiped? When you want somebody to do that with your debt and your credit, like, it's clean. Woo, y'all, y'all would be shouting out here. Like, I just said, wipe your life. And you guys were like, yay. And I was like, and well, now everyone in here is going to get their credit wiped out. And y'all would be just jumping around. Mm-hmm. We sorry, Lord. We're going to do better. God wants to do a, give you a clean. This is good news for somebody. This ain't good news for everybody. Some people will be like, okay, I, you know, I don't really have much. But there are some of us that would love a clean slate. Can you imagine that you, like, nothing from the past is holding you back any longer? It won't bother you. It won't haunt you. It won't, God, matter of fact, God's so cold with it. God said, I'll put every one of your sins into a sea of forgetfulness. A sea that I just, well, I'm on every, the only way I know that it happened is you keep bringing it up. Is when you go fishing. When you go fishing, that's all I know. Is when God's like, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. You bring it, God. God, remember when I was in eighth grade? God, I don't even remember. God is offering clean slates today. So will you accept God's invitation to experience new? Will you not perceive it? Will you not sense it? Do you sense that we live through a pandemic do y'all understand that? Well, no, it's not over, but we literally live through a pandemic. Do you sense that God wants to do something new? 
God wants to do something new in us. God wants to do something new in our church. God wants to do something new in our worship, the way we offer our lives to God. God is doing something new. Will you not feel it? Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? Or do you just want to stay in your old, comfortable ways, surrounded by junk and surrounded by hurt? You got to want this thing. Amen? So let's just close our eyes and just pray. Let's just have a moment with God. Some of us really would love this clean slate. And I'm telling you, it's available to you today. God has brought you to this place. God is allowing you to hear this word for a reason. God is tired of his children being berated by the enemy, of them not knowing who they are in him, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that if any person is in Christ, that they are a new creature, the old things are past and the new things are here, that God wants to do a new thing starting now, that your past was the past and it's everything that created you and made you into this point, but it's not what defines you. It's not what defines you. You are not the captivity you. You are the person. There is a version of you that you still haven't even met. And God wants to continue to mature you and grow you and walk this walk with Christ together so that we are conformed into his image. So, God, we pray a blessing over this word and to all the hearers that heard it. God, we feel that you are doing a new thing in our hearts. Forget the old things. They're done. There's nothing we could do about the past. There's nothing we could do. God, we thank you for all of those who are in a time of healing, in a time of therapy, in a time of counseling, in a time of working through and processing the things and the traumas of the past. But God, I pray that once we, we talk through it and get through it, that we will learn to press on to press on, to press towards the thing you have for us. And the prize is you. It's to you. You're the prize. You're who we want. God, we want you to, we want to take hold to that thing that you took hold of us. So God, we release it to you. Come on, if you are here and you're like, God, I want to give it all to you. I want a clean slate. I'm just tired of it all. If you're online and that, that's your testimony, I want you just to be, begin to open your heart. I'm going to ask everyone who is in the building to stand, everyone who is here to stand. And if that's you and you're like, you know what? I want a clean slate. I want it so bad. I want you to make your way down this aisle. Yes, make your way down this aisle and just live your life. God, I just want it. I want a new, I want a new. I, I believe you're doing a new thing in me.